Dr. Vasavada, and it is on dislocated IOLs management, new kid on the block. Uh, this is my financial interest. Uh, and uh, when I said new kid on the block, it is the late decentration or dislocation of the IOL, uh, surgery being performed absolutely uneventful in the bag implantation and nothing has gone wrong, but later on, uh, it, you have this problem and we did an analysis of what time and there are two peaks. One of them would around four to five years uh, post-op and other would be around 15 uh, plus years. So uh, depending upon the severity of the zonulopathy, uh, this happens, but the common causes cited in the literature are listed here. Homocystinuria is something goes un, unattended many times, but uh, otherwise we know uh, the posterior segment surgery and pseudo exfoliation really had the time. But I, I realize there are two ways this can happen. And the one type, which has not been talked about too much, is something this that there is a intact zonules and endocapsule and capsule bag, but the posterior capsule is dehiscent and the IOL subluxates and decenters through the a posterior capsule defect, and this is one such example. So it is not always zonulopathy. This is, however, very rare, but it does happen where everything else is intact, but the posterior capsule gives way. Maybe the material, maybe whatever, or maybe the zonules are weak, but not enough to be noticed, and then the IOL tilts and ruptures, whatever. But this is what uh, uh, is very common, zonulopathy giving total dislocation of the bag, uh, and the IOL within it. And uh, you have an option of refixation of the IOL. And this is the double aniridia ring done in a traumatic aniridia case five years by us. And uh, later after five years plus, he comes to us uh, with a dangling uh, ring. Uh, we could uh, solve that uh, by creating a space and use a segmental eye camera's uh, Sioni ring using Gore-Tex. And then we could uh, we could do that, but but I want to share that in majority of the cases, either I am not able to refixate or I give up now that we have a better methods of IOL fixation. So uh, this is one you can do in some cases, but typically I end up in exchange of IOL, <clears throat> and uh, basically it's suture dependent on one side uh, using Gore-Tex five or proline nine or proline or uh, iris claw lens. And iris claw lens has been a very good option and the late Dr. Daldis Singh showed us beautifully in various situations. So that is something depending, uh, depending upon your experience, one can do that. But, but it is the intrascular fixation which has drawn attention uh, for last 10 years. And, and as we all know by now, Gabor introduced, but it is Dr. Amar Agarwal who really made uh, this concept so easy and repeatable uh, glued IOL that it is becoming uh, quite popular. And there is now a new kid on that intrascleral as well, uh, Yamani technique. So I think we have uh, various options. And that's good news. Depending upon your experience, you can select the option you are familiar with. So that's great. But surgical management, whatever you decide, vitrectomy really is a crucial component of this management and working with retinal colleagues has become of paramount importance to all of us. So that's, that's very important to keep in mind. If you're using a suture dependent, particularly transcleral, Gore-Tex suture is something very good. And also 5-0 proline, if you, are, if you are familiar, we reported in American Journal of Ophthalmology, 100 cases of uh, Gore-Tex transcleral fixation. And then we found it very, useful and, and, and uh, uh, less of the complications. But uh, I, my preferred technique is intrascleral fixation. And I, I, I loved glued IOL technique uh, on various situations. And then Amar has uh, taught us very well how to do it. So I'm going to skip a little bit, but you need to be careful. What I would say a little differently is here that the vitrectomy should be done through separate ports, parse plana entry, not through these uh, little 25 gauge uh, holes that you make in uh, very close to the limbus. So I would recommend that. And uh, there are some logics uh, doing it to the parse plana. So 
I think that that's very important that we have a separate approach for vitrectomy and a separate approach for this uh, wonderful uh, technique of glute. But uh, I'm learning more and, and it is getting more and more uh, handy to me, the Yamani technique. And uh, I think it is an appeal uh, because of the less dissection and a little quicker. The key is really the the marking and there are various uh, markers i'm developing one myself but we need to be very precise before you touch the eye mark these eyes as been uh, uh, as been taught the two millimeter at different distances same meridian and if you are very careful and if you're precise the tilting of the lens which is not uncommon in this technique uh, would be very much reduced i prefer a scleral incision to avoid uh, the uh, astigmatism, but also I try to bring the trailing haptic into the incision. So that helps me if I'm more posterior compared to the corneal incision. So uh, what I do then is to uh, get the IOL, use the fixated, do the anti-vitrectomy at the other hand, and make sure you do not, uh, you do not drag on the vitreous uh, when you do vitrectomy. So hold the, stabilize the IOL and close the eye before uh, you begin uh, the vitrectomy. But this is something, look for the somering ring and, and uh, uh, you will be surprised at many times. If there is a somering ring with irrespective of the intrascular technique you have, it can tilt the lens. So make sure that you make uh, attempts to remove the somering ring uh, so that your IOL uh, remains in one plane. You take time. So if you don't do that many times, you will have this IOL tilt, which would happen more, as I said, with Yamani than the glute, but both are, no, 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 nothing is immune. Once you do that, 30 gauge thin walled needle, uh, which has the same bore like the 26 gauge uh, internally, uh, is very useful. And uh, uh, you can use the trocar, which Amar has developed, or a viscoelastic, or whatever you want to use. Make sure the chamber is, uh, well maintained and uh, grabbed with the 25 gauge forceps and these are the IOLs which has a PVDF uh, haptic so you can sort of make a knot of it they're they're wonderful if you have a PMM optic this technique uh, really poses a challenge and I would recommend to get your hands on these kind of lenses which really makes our life very easy and, and it comes up uh, very predictably uh, and threaded uh, that way. So that, that's trading happening. That's not a big issue. The original technique, and I think it's much better approach is to keep these uh, needles still inside the eye when you thread the trailing haptic. I, I find it a bit difficult. So I take it out and, and then, then create a flange uh, as you would see here with the cautery that you have. And then the trailing haptic uh, is something which uh, for which I bring the the needle into the incision and then because of these haptics are so malleable i am threading it and and bring it out uh, like uh, what we had and then create a flange and and push it uh, through the kanj uh, this is how it would typically looks like all the intrascular fixation so there are complications of course of the suture related the the posterior segment complications and and also the the tilt and, and the aberration. This is a Gore-Tex induced uh, granuloma. If the Gore-Tex is exposed subconjunctivally, it's very inflammatory. So make sure that you bury the sutures under the flap. If there is a tilt, you will find a capture and so on. So finally, I think we need to understand more about this new kid, late decentration of biology, in spite of everything gone well originally. Good news is that we have lots of options to treat it, but multidisciplinary, that means a colleague, a retinal colleague is a must, in my opinion, and also many times the cornea and glaucoma expert. But at the moment, I'm inclining more for Yamani for the appeal that it has that I don't need to take my time to make a flat and so on. But intrascleral fixation, uh, I think, is the way to go compared to all kinds of sutured technique. However, iris claw is something which is unique and, and if you're expert, please continue with that. So thank you so very much for your patient hearing. Thank you, 